Rockstar games. You know them from great games like The Warriors and Bully. Oh, and I guess Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead. What? Rockstar is known for their not so family friendly games, but they actually made a PS1 skateboarding game, believe it or not. What a weird mix, right? You make this? Yes. You make this? No way. This is amazing. No, the boarders don't hop off their board and start murdering people. It's just a skateboarding game. It's called Thrasher Skate and Destroy. So immediately you might be thinking Tony Hawk ripoff, but the release date is only a month apart, so it's really not. Tony Hawk goes for this zany arcade style, while Thrasher is much more grounded and realistic. You pick your guy and I pick Cyrus because he has what looks like a Super Smash Brothers logo tattooed on his arm. The level starts in practice mode so you can get the lay of the land. You'll immediately notice the soundtrack. It's old school hip hop and it's a banger. You won't hear any of it in this video though because I don't want the copyright gods to smite me. Once you're ready, you skate around and score points to beat the level. You score points by doing tricks, but like I said before, this game is more simulation than arcade. You have a list of tricks to do, and it takes some time in order to pull them off. You're not doing 720 double kick flips off of 50 foot drops. Each level is fun to experiment in, and when you pull off some cool shit, it's legit satisfying. This is also one of the first games to have ragdoll physics, which kinda scared me as a kid. You also have a health bar, and when your health bar runs out, you die. Oh no, you don't die. You're board breaks because that's what happens when you collide with a train at max speed just your board breaks look at this trick check this oh no oh my god please stop and i stuck the landing so you skate around and what you better run you little reprobate run! why are you running can't escape me! Snake, are you okay? Snake? Snake? Yeah, so after a certain amount of time, a cop comes after you, and if you don't escape, you're busted. You heard of first person games and third person games, but get a load of this second person view. Nick Robinson, eat your heart out. I think I had the coolest escape moment ever, by the way. Get over here! See you, chump. Each level you beat, you unlock new tricks, which offer more points. Much like Tony Hawk, this game has that whole 90s skateboarding vibe down to a T. From sponsors to unlocking skateboarding clips. But the thing is, there isn't much more to the game. Experimenting in different levels is fun, but the only objective is to score points and run from a cop or score points to win a contest. No collectibles or objectives or anything that would make you want to replay a level besides, oh, let me try jumping over this train again. It's a fun game, but it really wasn't done right until Skate came out years later. Also, as you can imagine, Tony Hawk completely overshadowed this game. Maybe if this game came out first, we would be playing the remastered version of this game instead of Pro Skater 1 and 2, but there's a good chance in this alternate reality that SpongeBob is called SpongeBoy Ahoy. You know what? Let's just leave everything as it is. NHL Rock the Rink is an over-the-top arcade game. It's weird because the game doesn't feature any NHL teams or players without unlocking them first. I never heard of another sports game that does this. EA published this game, but it's not under the EA Sports label, which is pretty weird. Playing the game is just madness from the menu music. <laughs> To the gameplay. You can hit other players, do wrestling moves to them, check them into the stands. It's a damn free for all. You have special shots that twirl you all around as if you're a ballerina on ice, which I guess is a figure skater, but anyway. You fill up your bonus meter, and when it fills up, it's the hypest shit. This is the video game equivalent of a bowl of frosted flakes. After enough time, you can enter fighting mode, and it's terrible. I don't think these two are here to discuss poetry, which is too bad, really, because poetry can teach us so much about ourselves. Have you ever seen shin punching in a fight before? Like, well, like what is this? Yeah, just look. You don't need a lengthy speech to see why this sucks. I like your kudgy. 
Thankfully, fighting is optional. The controls are a little weird though. Circle hits, but circle also speeds you up. Why not just use any of the other buttons on the controller? I hate when games do this. Outside of that, this is a fun game. And he puts it upstairs where Grandma keeps Granddad in an urn. Which is sad, really, because Granddad is still alive. What the hell? The main mo- the main mode is NHL Challenge mode. You play teams and beat them to unlock them while earning upgrades for your team. And the game gets progressively harder as you go. NHL Rock the Rink is a game game. Pop it in and have a gay old time. No tutorials or anything like that. Here's a hockey game, play it. The game is best when it's just pick up and play with friends. Critics liked it, but this one line from the IGN review caught my eye. Rock the Rink is a surprisingly fun and addictive video game experience. Even though I really went into the game wanting to hate it. What the hell kind of reviewer says that? One for IGN apparently. Bellator MMA, you may recognize them as the number two MMA company in the world, but to me, they're the company that almost had a fighter die from exhaustion. Dada has no idea where he is. Little do we know there's actually a Bellator game, Bellator Onslaught. When you play this game, it just screams budgeted title. And yes, I'm aware that's what it is, but man, it's like shopping at Walmart and buying marshmallow mateys instead of Lucky Charms. There's only eight fighters to choose from and they're all from the featherweight and lightweight divisions. Not a real huge selection. I guess if you wanted to play any other weight class, you can go screw yourself. That loading screen music can start a party, though. Since it's a budgeted game, they go for this simplified arcade style gameplay. You both have health bars, and once one of them is depleted or someone submits, the match is over. Video. That's all well and good, but this sucks. The striking animations look pretty bad, and since you have to deplete your opponent's health fully to win, there is no flash KOs. That takes away from the whole, the fight can end at any time shtick that MMA games normally have. You have basic button combos, blocks, and sways. That's the stand-up game. It's as shallow as a rain puddle. <laughs> Takedowns are the best thing this game has going for it, because they're pretty brutal. and sometimes super over the top. But the takedowns lead to the ground game, which is the worst thing about this game. Grappling is even worse than the striking because nothing's responsive. Everything is centered on the right stick. Clinches, takedowns, submissions, transitions, and counters. But they're about as responsive as a potential second Tinder date. That's not at all if, if you needed me to clarify. I think you have a higher chance of sneaking into Area 51 undetected than you do successfully blocking a transition or submission. I mean, just how fast do you have to react? It's like you have to move the right stick and just guess. In the end, the grappling just looks like two amateurs just rolling around with each other. The submission system is this degenerate thing where you have to button mash to escape. I was never a big fan of systems like this in any game. The stamina determines how easy it is for you to get submitted or you to submit someone. Submissions are the easiest way to win against AI. Just have them drain their stamina and then go for a submission. submission. Sometimes you could stun your opponent and then you can go for a Bellator moment, which is admittedly pretty cool. Coco Punch! You have a championship road mode, which is pretty much an arcade ladder mode. You have to go through the roster, but don't lose though, because you have to start all over. Oh man, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like watching Ink Masters on Spike TV. And lastly, you can create your own fighter, but the options are so limited, you shouldn't even bother with it. Eight face presets, eight hairstyles, eight pieces of facial hair. Look, if we were playing the lotto, that many eights in a row might be a good thing, but for here, it's not. You give your guy moves and go through trials to unlock more moves. So is Bellator MMA any good? Hell no! Legitimately, one of the saddest things I've come across is the publisher of this game, 345 Games, not to be confused with 505 Games or 343 Industries, posted things like patch updates to, of all places, GameFAQs boards, and they would only get like two or three responses at most. And those responses were just people saying that the game sucks. Man, I know I just crapped all over this game, but I really do feel bad. Let's look at a baseball game. No. 2020? 
Yeah, it's actually not that bad. In the sea of 1990s baseball games that all look and feel the same, believe it or not, the futuristic one with robots is able to stand out. Who would have thought? I remember I had a SNES ROM pack and the game 2020 Super Baseball was near the top. It caught my curiosity. I don't know why they settled on the year 2020 though. When we're talking about futuristic sounding years, it's always 2000 that's used. Well, screw 2000. This is 2000 times, uh, 1.01, yeah. I mean, when you turn 2020 upside down, it's 50-50. So maybe that's what they meant and somebody in the marketing team read it wrong. That would explain why I don't have robots and jetpacks in my life right now. And it starts right now. <laughs> 2020 Super Baseball takes some liberties on the sport. Well, let's get the obvious out of the way. There are humans, both male and female, playing baseball with power armor, jetpacks, and sensors. I guess you could say this is performance enhancing? Barry Bonds, you were juicing about two decades too early, my friend. In addition to humans, there's also actual robots. Foul ground has been significantly reduced. You can just hit weak pop flies into the stands which are now glass, by the way. Hey, no social distancing. And you can get a double off of it. To offset that, you can only hit home runs over the center field wall. <laughs> See, look, the computer just hit a home run off me. Time to return the favor. <laughs> That's gone, baby. <laughs> uh, what the hell? There are two leagues of teams to choose from. Most of these teams come from actual places. American Dreams, Tokyo Samurais, Korea Dragoons. But then you got teams like the Ninja Black Sox. Ninja isn't a location as far as I know. I just want to know where these ninjas are from, yo. I picked the Mechanical Brains, a team of one female and the rest of the players being robots. Look, I can make some type of corn joke out of that, but it's too easy. When you finally pick your team, you battle it out with other teams for the best record. As you can imagine, the gameplay is very offensive centric because you know, robots. You can slide and jump with your jetpack to make cool looking plays. And yes, these are satisfying. Since my team is all robots, you would think I would have an advantage. But the thing is, robots can blow up if you keep sliding, jumping, pitching, base running, sitting, existing, or literally doing anything. On the other hand, human pitchers get fatigued, but they could do everything else just fine. So jump out to a big lead early with the robots because much like me, they blow their load halfway through. Throughout the game, you earn these points. These points can be spent on power upgrades. You can earn more points by doing nice catches, getting hits, strikeouts. Here's a top secret pro level 2020 baseball tip. Whenever there's a fly ball, just jump before the ball lands. The game counts it as a jumping catch and you get the extra points coming from it. You can upgrade specific players hitting, pitching, fielding arm, or just replace them with a damn robot that covers all three. I normally just do the hitting upgrades for two reasons. One, chicks dig the long ball. And two, see reason one. There can be some tense moments where the game's on the line and you activate your power up, or the opponent does the same. There are some issues I have though. Firstly, the fielding is ass incarnate. You can only control one player at a time, and it's the player the game gives you. So there are instances where the ball is hit right in front of someone, but I have to run over with another player from another damn county to field the ball. Also, it seems first baseman always cover the base rather than fielding the ball. The music is always really the same. It's a catchy tune, but it's the only one you hear the whole time. And the SNES instruments can get a little grating. <laughs> Also, the game isn't really animated all that well. Frames of animation are missing in a lot of animations, most notably the pitching windup. I've seen better animation on a Captain Underpants flip or rama section. This game is not all that accurate to the year 2020, but considering what the year 2020 ended up being, do you really want it to be?